Hello YouTubers, this is Protech Gear and today I'll show you how to install Kali Linux inside a virtual machine. Uh, so before I begin, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn all the notifications on. Alright, so let's move on to the tutorial. First of all, you will require two things. Well, first obviously the Kali Linux installation files and second you will need a virtual machine software as we will be installing it uh, inside a virtual machine all right so i'm using oracle vm virtual box which is a freeware software you can just download it by uh, going to this link this is under the description also you can just check that out all right so move on to the download section now from here download uh, uh, according to which your system corresponds to if you are under windows environment you will download the windows version from here if you are under os 10 like me right now then we'll download the os 10 version from here if you are under linux distribution other than kali then you will download it from here and if you are under solaris then you will download it from here all right now uh, let's do this and secondly you'll need Kali Linux uh, in images so from here you can download any of them after you do that place it into a suitable uh, direction I mean directory and we can uh, begin our work now alright as you can see it is 2017.2 and I have 2017.1 well it doesn't matter because we can always upgrade it once we install and the processes I'll show is basically the same there is uh, not even a single difference I got when I upgraded from 2016.2 to 2017.1 as I did fresh install both the times alright now let's begin installation open up your virtual box click new then type the name of the operating system in case this is in this case it is Kali Linux and it will show you the versions if you are sure enough which version you have downloaded you can choose it uh, according to that but uh, I'll just uh, suggest you to leave it like this alright and also make sure that you choose the right bit and you download the right bit suppose you have downloaded 64 bit version of Kali and here you have chosen the 32 bit then it will cause problems while in installation or while you will uh, run the operating system so make sure that it is same and nothing is done wrong here okay now hit continue now choose how much of memory you want to give this virtual machine 1 GB is recommended so let it be one gigabytes now if you have more ram like 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes then you can allot uh, more ram but as i have 8 gigabytes i'll not go higher than one gigabytes but i can also go up to two to three gigabytes but as one gigabytes is recommended i will stick with that hit continue now here it will ask you to create a virtual hard disk now or not to create a virtual hard disk or use an existing virtual hard disk as we are going to create a new virtual hard disk so select this option and hit on continue now here it will ask you the type of virtual hard disk here it is vdi for virtual box disk image here's for vhd for virtual hard disk and here is VMDK for virtual machine disk. I'll suggest you that you select VHD and hit continue. Now here it will ask for the character of the hard disk if you want to create it dynamically allocated or fixed size. Now what dynamically allocated means that um, suppose you have created a virtual hard disk of 16 gigabytes of size. Uh, through this wizard and you have installed the operating system for example take windows xp which takes about two gigabytes of installation space i mean uh, yes space and the hard disk will be two gigabytes of size although you have chosen 
16 gigabytes because as you add files the hard drive will become larger and larger until it reaches its full potential that is 16 gigabytes in this example and if you choose fixed size suppose you create a 16 gigabytes of uh, virtual hard disk and it will allocate all the space at once and this fixed size is uh, considered to be faster than dynamically allocated all right here it is written that a fixed size hard disk may take a longer to create on some systems but it is often easier to use all right so let's go with fixed size and hit continue here you will choose the size i'll recommend that you choose 16 gigabytes if you have a bigger hard drive then you can choose bigger uh, numbers here but if you were having a smaller hard drive or if you don't have much free space on your hard drive then it's good to have 16 gigabytes all right now hit create now it will take a bit of time uh, probably 20 seconds it depends on system all right now when this thing will complete i will boot this up and i will, I will let you in through the installation process all right now we have created the virtual machine now it's time to boot this up hit start now it will ask for a installation media suppose at this point i would like to mention that if you are installing this with a usb then you will they will choose the usb device if you are using an optical disc then you will choose it here now if you are using a iso file like i will be doing for this tutorial then hit on browse and uh, navigate to the uh, to the directory where the iso is stored and select that and hit open these processes are basically the same for mac and windows environment and also for other linux environment like linux mint or ubuntu okay now hit start now i'll choose this change it into uh scaled mode all right now let me stretch this and make it a bit bigger so that you can see it clearly so here are the different options you can choose live boot Kali, you can live boot fail safe, live boot forensic mode. You can do anything from here. I like to go with graphical install. Now, what does simply install means that it will be installed through uh, command lines. But if you are a new user, as if you are as if you are watching this video, I assume that you are a new user or a beginner of Kali because this is a beginner's tutorial. All right, now let's proceed with graphical install. All right, so here's the setup. So here, select the language and hit continue. Select where you are living, I mean your country, hit continue. Select your keyboard hit continue now in this point i would like to mention one more thing if you are installing a uh, kali on a physical machine with usb here you might face a problem it it may show you cannot mount cd rom if that happens put your usb out i mean plug it out for about five seconds and then plug it in again all right the prob problem will be perished all right now let's move on now it's configuring the network now this is the system name what you would like to call your system by default it is Kali I'll just leave it Kali for this time hit continue now if you want to make your uh, um, Kali Linux computer I mean this virtual machine a part of a domain or whatever it is you can choose the domain name as I don't want to do that I'll leave that blank and hit continue okay now in at this point we will need to set a password make sure that you don't forget or mistype and actually enable the so password in clear so that you can see what password you're entering all right 
you can choose any password here i have chosen root one for this tutorial once you are done with that hit continue now it will set up the clock now it will ask you to select your time zone select according to where you were living now hit continue again now it will detect the hard disk all right as we have only one virtual hard disk at this point so at this time so we will use guided use entire disk now if you want to manually configure resize or recreate or delete partitions then you will need to select manual as i have only one partition so i'll select guided use entire disk now hit continue now as i told one hard disk so this is the one all right hit continue again now yeah choose this one if you are doing in a virtual machine because uh, hard drive is uh, probably small than a physical machine this time because 16 gigabytes 17.2 gigabytes is considered to be small these days all right so yeah select all files in one partition recommended for new users hit continue all right select partitioning and uh, finish partitioning and write changes to disks hit continue select yes hit continue now it will install the system now this will take a bit of time probably 10 minutes or more depending on your system so uh, yeah see you in a few minutes goodbye guys all right now installation is almost completed at this moment okay now it will ask you if you want to use a network mirror all right hit yes and continue again now if your internet connection is proxy then you will need to enter proxy informations here but uh, if it's direct like me then uh leave it blank for none as it has been written here hit continue now it will configure atp and it may download some file as it is showing retrieving file 20 of 22 so give it a time until it downloads this now time will be very depending on your internet speed now it is installing the grub bootloader into the hard disks now it will download some files as you can see here now it's gonna take uh, some time not much about uh, one minute or two depending on your internet speed now once everything is done it will restart and now we can use our operating system now the installation process is almost completed okay now it will ask if you want to install the grub bootloader into the master boot record of your first hard drive uh, and yes it is showing that warning if the installer failed to detect another operating system that is present on a computer modifying the master boot record will make that operating system temporarily unbootable to grub loader not true grub can be manually configured later to boot it uh, if you are installing this under a virtual box right now like me then uh, won't be it won't be any problem now if you're doing this uh, in a physical machine then if it shows like this then you might be in a problem for that need to manually configure grub bootloader later all right now hit uh, now select yes hit continue now you need to choose in which hard disk the grub bootloader will be installed so this is the only one hard disk i have so i'll select this and i will hit continue now it is installing on the selected hard drive all right now it is finishing the installation 
all right the installation is complete so it is the time to boot into your new system make sure to remove the installation media so that you don't boot into the new system rather than restarting the installation all right it continue again now if you when it restarts need to remove this disk from virtual drive wait until it restarts all right so we need to remove it so here is the bootloader the grub bootloader here is the advanced options for Kali GNU Linux and here is the normal Kali GNU Linux so it's time to boot up our Kali so hit enter okay so here is our login screen so here we need to put our username that is root hit enter and password that are selected during the installation time root one all right now it will boot i mean it will log in okay so finally here is our kali system Alright now if you are wondering I have Wi-Fi here and why a Ethernet symbol here. Now this is because the virtual machine detects the Wi-Fi as a Ethernet inside the virtual machine. I mean the operating system that is running inside a virtual box. So if you want to do any Wi-Fi hacking that I did in my previous video if you want to check that out the links are at the description. Now if you want to do Wi-Fi hacking using a virtual box then you need to buy a external Wi-Fi USB adapter. Now if you are using a physical machine then it will detect the Wi-Fi. Alright now let's update it, update the system as I told you I will show you how to upgrade the distro. First apt-get update. Now one thing I would like to mention if you were in a non root user then you need to add sudo here now if you are in a root user then sudo is not necessary hit enter now it will download a list of uh, files that are available on the server now when you will uh, uh, type this time sudo app to get this uh, upgrade which will upgrade your distro i mean from 2017 to uh 2017.1 to 2017.2 all right now these are the things you need to, to upgrade your operating system now if you want to simply upgrade all the files and so installed under kali uh with this version then simply remove dist i mean dist from here all right so that was the tutorial guys if you have enjoyed my tutorial hit like subscribe to my channel to get more technical videos like this share my channel and help me to grow and one good news i have to say that my channel is growing nowadays and i'm pretty close to 500 subscribers and i know i believe that with your support i can do this i can hit 500 subscribers and in this video i aim for 50 likes so if you like this video don't forget to hit like and read the description for any information uh, you'll need and if you have any questions regarding kali linux or anything about this video simply drop a comment below in the comment section and I'll catch up with you in my next video. So goodbye. Peace out.